idea here is if we're, we're starting here for our survey, we would have our farmer started and we'd start looking for, for bees. Um, so I just haven't seen anything at all flying, but um, so we might just need to pretend that we have um, some bees um, on this flower. I'm um, actually going back, you know, before, <laughs> before we start surveying, there's stuff to fill out on the, on your sheet. So, um, on your sheet, you fill in the, the site name, the date, the grid. Um, for temperature, I usually just use a weather app on my phone to, to see what the temperature is. You know, there, there are, I've, I've found for kind of handheld things that give you, you know, the, the temperature, you know, handheld weather things, you need to get kind of expensive for them to be accurate. Otherwise they're wildly inaccurate. And um, usually there's a close weather station to wherever you are. So you, you can even just, if you, if you don't have any service or something and you can't get the weather app to work, usually you can find information from a weather station and fill in the temperature um, and, and things like wind, you, you know, you probably need from the app. Cloud cover, I usually just estimate, just I just, you know, look up at the sky and that's a percent. So today is easy, <laughs> just look up and you go, it's a hundred percent cloud cover. If it's, um, if it's not a hundred percent cloud cover, you can just kind of, you just have to use some imagination kind of if all the clouds were squished over into this part of the sky is it you know 25 percent is it 50 percent um and then um so then before you start you're writing down your your start time and your end time so that's um you know the the total time including time that you would stop your timer for processing all that kind of stuff so so start time is just before you start um and then um collection method if you did capture and photo of of all the bees is um what we ideally want you to do there's an option there um that you did capture and photo of only bees that that look different or sometimes people will do photo only um especially if you are wanting to do surveys in areas where rusty patch bumblebee has been found and um and you know we don't we don't want you accidentally capturing them um okay so if we've filled this out ahead of time and then now we're um starting through oh there, there is something flying there's a lot flying man there's just really not much out here right now but um, if I was walking along, surveying, and I saw a bee on, on this flower with the, with the vials, usually the bees are pretty active in there and they, they tend to fly up. So if you just have the larger part of the, the cup, you're usually able to just kind of go around the flower. Um, you know, they they will tend to fly up so you can usually leave a little gap there to to not tear the flowers apart and then seal this up and and get it in there if you're um writing down information you would pause your timer if you're getting you know the piece of tape on there to keep track of the the plant that this was on um if you if you don't know the plant taking photos of the plant as well and you can make notes on your your data sheet so if you um are needing to to keep track of the host plant you know you would do oh, that yeah. Like some notes. <laughs> yeah um and then um you know sticking this bee down into the ice you can um start your timer up again and um keep checking out flowers. So usually I just kind of scan and kind of see like how, you know, where, where am I going to go next? You're kind of wandering to the flowers, but you're counting your wandering time too. So you don't have your timer on just at the flowers. 
you have your timer on as you're going to clean flowers. Um, the dragonfly over there. So, you know, you can look and scan. If you're not seeing stuff, you would just kind of look up and see where should I go next. There's another flower patch over there. So you want to just have kind of a, a steady pace for how you're going through, um, through the site. And um, if I find the, the, the vials to be the, the easiest for, in terms of processing time, you, know, you just kind of get them in the vial, put them right on ice. If you do, oh, there is a bee. So I'll just net this bee. It's not a bubble bee. But um, for if you do want to use a net, um, the vials can be a little tricky. So, um, but with a net, you just want to keep, after you've moved, moved um, over the bee with a net, you want to kind of make do some, some quick swishes, get it down in the end of the net. And um, so then I have to see here. So if this was a bumblebee, I'd be pausing my timer for this part. And um, when you have a bee up at the, up within a net, you can just kind of pinch it so they get trapped in one part of the net. You can come up with a container then and, um, and go right up underneath them and usually you can kind of uh i usually just kind of move the vial along until like, i convince them to, to not be on the net so they fall down into the jar the tricky part here and also there when you're collecting directly off the flower you just want to make sure that when you're when you're closing your your vials if it's a snap lid or a screw on lid you just want to make sure that you see that the bee is is not up here because <laughs> you, you just don't want to the, the main kind of safety concern with using the vials is squishing them so just making sure that they're down there so um not a bumblebee but we've got a pretty minor bee 